Welcome back to Redford Arena, where it's now time for a Class A championship action. Hello, everyone, again. I'm Ann Penstone, along with Denise Lazzaroni Cavanaugh. Seeing great double A action. Now it's time for the A schools to take the floor. Columbia making their first appearance, and Bree Central, who's been here six times. Honey, and the interesting thing is both these schools come all the way here to play, and they're from the same conference. I think they may have a little bit of knowledge about each other, but it doesn't matter until you get on the floor in a championship match. So let's take a look at the road. First for the visitors, the Columbia Eagles. As you see, they beat Spring Valley Hall in the semifinal and had a fairly easy route, except perhaps they said their best match was against Nashville. And on the other side for Breeze Central. Breeze, you see Hartsburg Emden at Hardham and Crescent City Iroquois, Effingham and Alton, all two game matches. Right, and, and again, a nice schedule for them to get here and be ready for the state championship. Well, again, you've got teamwork, but you have key players. So first, for Columbia, let's take a look at their key players tonight. First, Sammy McLeod. Sammy McLeod, amazing player. Uh, as you can see here, she's had 478 kills on the season, and she's a fired up player. Fired up. Fired up doesn't even describe her. Wait till you see her on the floor. She is just bundle of action. On the other side, we've also got Kelly Lindsay. And Kelly's just amazingly consistent all weekend, passing, hitting, attacking, just doing it all for the team. And for Breeze Central, we have Sarah Barth. Sarah Barth has done a great job. Lefty setter, hitter. They run a 6-2 with her. As you can see, her 183 kills on the season, 502 assists. Their team leader. And another lefty, Amanda Bacchus. Amanda Bacchus has done a great job blocking this whole state tournament, and they work well together and work as a team. They are really excellent. And, of course, they have won a state championship back in 1996, but not with any of those players, just with Coach Jim Cook. Keys to the game. Let's look at three. First for Columbia. Well, here we go. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Uh, she'll be no secret at all to anybody when she takes the court. And then all around Lindsay. She has just been doing it, being consistent, playing all around, and playing well for this team. And then here's what's happening with more superstitions, And The coach says she has to wear her earrings. And if she forgot them during the sectionals, she had to go back and get them. And she's wearing those for good luck as well. And nobody's going to let her take them off either. On the other side for Breeze Central, we have Lefty Squared. Lefty Square, you've got Barth, um, who, just like I said, lefty with that lefty hand, she'll hit the ball, she'll set it, she'll do it all. And a middle lefty, which is awkward. So they're going to be a handful for any team that they play. Um, also, Shragi, we have, too, who's a great jump server, and look for her to score some points off that jump serve. And then their motto all season has been <laughs> get her done. The French club put a sign up with get her done. I mean, the whole school's involved. Well, we're ready to get her done here tonight with the A championship action. Let's go to PA announcer for the lineups. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Class A championship volleyball. This evening's final match features Breeze Central High School and Columbia. For the home team, the Cougars of Central High School, who entered the match with a record of 32 wins and nine losses. Let's meet coach Jim Cook, who has a career record of 443 wins, 154 losses in a career of 18 years. And for the visitors, the Eagles of Columbia, who entered the match with a record of 36 wins and four losses, please meet coach Kelly Friedrich who has a career record of 36 wins and four losses in her first year. And now, let's meet the teams. The non-starters. For Central, number three, Brittany Holtman. For Columbia, number four, Tracy Ford. For Central, number nine, Bethany Becker. For Columbia, number six, Anna Etchinson. For Central, number 12, Megan Winkler. For Columbia, number nine, Shelby Stein. For Central, number 13, Cassie Becker. For Columbia, number 15, Aaron Bingham. For Central, number 14, Lindsay Holtman. 
And for Columbia, number 16, Kelly Hunsdorfer. For Central, number 16, Lauren Endres. And for Columbia, number 26, Natalie Aris. For Central, number 17, Kelsey Shear. For Columbia, number 27, Jessica Rushline. And for Central, number 25, Cassie Beanie. And now, let's meet the starters. For the Cougars, a sophomore, number 19, Lauren Buddy. And for the Eagles, senior, Number 13, Corey Gobersheimer. For the Cougars, senior, number 11, Sarah Barth. And for the Eagles, senior, number 19, Brittany Schmidt. For the Cougars, a senior, number eight, Melanie Garthside. And for the Eagles, a senior, number three, Sammy McLeod. For the Cougars, senior, number 15, Amanda Beckett. And for the Eagles, a senior, number 12, Tara Artinger. For the Cougars, a senior, number 18, Kelsey Schrader. And for the Eagles, a senior, number two, Kelly Lindsay. Rounding out the starting six for the Central Cougars, number 21, senior, Brittany Schrage. And for the Eagles, a junior, number five, Sarah Bailey. Back at Redford Arena, ready for a Class A championship action. There you see the Columbia Eagles, 37-3 against Breeze Central. And there are the starting lineups for Columbia on the left. And Breeze Central, we talked about Bacchus and Barth on the right, and Sammy McLeod, number three, and all around, Kelly Lindsay for the Columbia Eagles. We expect a great match, and to serve first will be Breeze Central. And that is Lauren Buddy, a 5'10 sophomore. A smile of number 18. And that is Kelly Strader, and we are underway. Class A championship match. It's anything like the first one, you are in for a treat. Barth inside, tip. And there's the Libro, Tracy Ford picks it up out of bounds. First point goes to Breeze. And Breeze with that double block on Sammy McLeod. They know she's gonna get the ball and they're gonna try to take care of her. You may never see a more excitable player than Sammy McLeod. Oh, great dig by Lindsay. There she is all over. Point, breathe. Coach Friedrich's a little disappointed in that. A great save and you hope you can make it over. And you're right, Lindsay, she's, she's done it all, has been consistent. What a great play. Great players find ways, I'm sure Sammy will. And there she is right there, just as we talked about it. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Isn't that the motto? I think that's it, and it's certainly <laughs> apropos. Back to serve, wearing your number 13, Corey Gummersheimer. That's right. We love her name. She's a senior 5'8". Down 0-2. Barth outside, guard side. And the lefty Barth takes care of her business on her own. And Barth, it, you know, by far in the state tournament has been most impressive with that lefty swing, just putting the ball down when she needs to. There's a 5'10 senior with the jump serve. We said we haven't seen that many in the tournament. Sammy with the tip. Dart side picked up by the Libro Ford. 
And Sammy off the block this time. Side out in point. And they had a triple block on her this time, and she said, okay, let me find the smallest one to hit over. <laughs> and she took that direction. I still think it's amazing. These kids are hanging up there, looking around, going, mm, let me see where I go. And they make a choice. Yeah, that's all in the jeans. Brittany Schmidt was serving, and it ball off the tip. Number 15, Amanda Backus. There's the other lefty point. Yeah, that's Breeze. that lefty squared we were talking about. Barth to Bacchus, a very dangerous duo. Guard side serving. 4-2, Breeze with the lead. That ball's gonna land across court by number 21, Brittany Schrage. Point, Breeze. And that's always a great system when you gotta worry about Bacchus, Schrage's open, so she really can go to two people there, and that was perfect set. Sammy finds the open hole and down. Side out point. Sammy didn't look too excited about that kill that time, did she? I really wish she'd show a little enthusiasm. I'm not kind of worried about <laughs> this whole tournament. She has so much energy. She's so fun to watch. Keep thinking she'll wear out by all the celery, but she's so positive. It's amazing and so energetic. Point, Columbia. And Sammy's in the back row serving and. They have caught it there, only one behind. There you see a good look at the Columbia crowd wearing Columbia blue, amazingly enough. Oh, nice block. And right now, that's Anna Etchison, just a sophomore. She plays opposite, of course, of Sammy McLeod and has really had a nice tournament. Yeah, and they, and they, unfortunately, there was a net violation on that, and that happens sometimes. Lindsay Holtman in for back as she'll serve. There's Etchison we just talked about. So after the net violence, she comes back with a kill. And Etchison's starting to pick up some uh, uh, McLeod's moves. She's stuffing up and down screaming. I think she's catching some of that energy. Well, Sammy McLeod has enough for the entire gym. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Harris in the 5'5 junior serving in place of Tara Artinger. And that's number 21, Brittany Shragi from the outside. Barth congratulates her. Shragi is an amazing smaller outside hitter, and she has hops, so to speak. Gets up there and is able to take a look around and put that ball down when she needs to. Lauren Endress into the Breeze Central Cougar lineup. And she'll set. There's Barth, finds along the line. And we talked about the ability of both these teams to run that 6-2, which is so effective. They always have three hitters in the front row. They can use their go-to hitters like Barth and, and, and McLeod, and, and they get to do it all. Another lefty, Endress also a lefty. A plethora of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice dig. And there's Lindsay picked up by the Libero, Tracy Ford. Barth keeps it alive. Longest rally of the match so far. Lindsay cross court still picked up. Shragi, kill. Nine five, Breeze Central with the lead. Bringing all the action here for Redford Arena. Oh, nice, nice dig. And the Libro Ford picks it up. Lindsay to Etchison. Oh, nice idea, just a hair long. Yeah, it was, it was a great idea. She had to do something with that ball. She looked for the deep shot. It's very difficult to get a read on where you're at with that, but really good, good concept. Four straight points for Endress. One of them, of course, on the side out. Uh, the let serve is legal. Barth becoming the hitter. Etchison gives way to Sammy. In the middle, that ball out of bounds. No touch, side out. Bree's looking for it, not gonna get it, says Randy Posey up on top, the referee. And there's the Columbia Eagles. 
And Kelly Lindsay will go back to serve. And just a, did a nice job there, moving the ball around. She puts the ball up efficiently, and, and a great job serving. Blocked out of bounds. Point. Reeves. And Bart, Bart coming in on the left side, sometimes it's a very difficult shot to block over there. And, um, you know, they're going to have to kind of watch her when she's in that rotation. Brittany Shragi, the other jump server. A rare error. They haven't had many service errors off those jump serves, which is why they keep doing them. Yeah, and I didn't see her miss a serve uh, in this either. tournament. If I did, I was taking a nap because <laughs> I, I thought she had uh, the most effective jump serve. No time to take a nap with these exciting matches. Tough athletic move by number 19, Lauren Buddy, because boy, that ball was way behind her head. Point, freeze. So it's 12 and 7, Breeze Central, kind of edging out further. But now we got the front row. Sammy's back in the front row. Let's see what happens. Point for the Columbia Eagles. And Bailey, number five for Columbia, she does a nice job of getting that ball out there to Sammy. And uh, it was a little tight on that, and she knew exactly what to do with it, get it off the block, get that kill. Corey Gummersheimer back to serve. Nice dig. Sammy with the free ball. Yep, good call by Randy Posey. And that's point, that's the first time that Columbia's been able to string two points together. Yeah, and they're, they're, that team's a fighting team. You know, we saw them earlier today, and they just fight their way point for point. One at a time, like the matches. Bent the tough play, side out in point for the Cougars. 13 to nine, four point advantage. First game, Class A championship match. Serving Sarah Bart. Lefty jump serve. Lindsay picks it up, but right there to take advantage of it. Number 18, Kelsey Strader. Well, then we talked about the jump server right there. That was, you know, the, that jump server enabled that point to happen. It was a tough serve. Not able to mount the attack off the jump serve, and that ball is out of bounds. Good call by Lebro Tracy Ford. Point, Columbia. Number 19, the 5'6 senior, Brittany Smith serving. Oh, nice dig. Oh, good dig, but not able to convert. Tough. Uh, Bacchus is going to benefit Wichita State. She'll be headed there on a full ride. And that's Melanie Gr Gartside, number eight, serving. athletic shot down the line by her. And she's fired up. And timeout. Columbia, we'll be back. There you see the officials, and what an honor for them. Randy Posey and Terry Narantic, and aided by Lines versus Pat Creek and Jackie Spread. They have earned their way here as well. And boy, if you have never officiated, we are hurting for officials, the IHSA. Sign up today. There are lots of courses being offered, and it's a great way to be stay with the game. Point. Columbia, so right out of the timeout, they get what they want. Yeah, and it, you, know, you know, I'm pretty sure Coach Friedrich is like, let's go. We know what, we, what we've been doing all year. We know we could do this. You know, and in that situation, we need to get McLeod the ball. She's in the back row. So Atchison's got to take over some of the slack up there. The ball hit the net antenna that is out of bounds. So two successive points for the Eagles. And they climb back within four, 16-12. That ball just in, says Pat Creek. Point, Cougars. And into the lineup number 14, Lindsay Holtman to serve. The great jump set by Barth. Just so calm and controlled and so positive with the teammates. Shragi finds another open spot, 18 
to 12. And this crowd shouting, Froggy, Froggy. Holtman serving the 5'6 senior. Oh, nice dig. Saved. Sammy with the free ball. Block. There's Etchison. Maybe that'll get her going. There she is. There it is, Etchison. Etchison was not letting that ball come back over. She was determined on that block at the net. It was a great play. And back to serve. Artinger leaving for a gift away to Natalie Ayers. If you look right there on that play, I mean, she penetrates that nut. It's amazing. What a great shot with our camera up on the net. Oh, great dig. Tip. Oh, over the net. What a play. Guard side. And there's Etchison. So Etchison's really come to life. Yeah, and they need her to. I mean, they really need her to do those things and make those big plays. And again, she's getting as pumped up as McLeod. So they might be having a battle there. Not a lot of schools have a 6-2 and a 6-3 to play opposite. No. Shroggy. Down the block. I tell you what, she generates as much arm speed as anyone in the tournament. Yeah, and, and Shroggy, Shroggy for a small player, if you see her there, she goes up against the big girls and is like, ah, oh, the block's my friend. 19-14, Breeze Central, these conference they're from the same conference, playing here for a state championship. Breeze won the first, won the conference, but I don't think Columbia would mind giving that up to them if they could win the state. And I know they wouldn't give. That ball long. 15-19, serving Kelly Lindsay. Barth becomes a hitter, and she knows what to do, whether she's hitting or setting. And I just like her disposition on the court. She's great with her teammates. She always has a smile. She's a very positive player. Same way Sammy McLeod is on the other side. Barth a lot quieter about it. <laughs> or at least not, not as overt, really. Oh, what a smart play. See, that, there's a smart player. She's, she, she's celebrating and she realized, wait, hey, maybe, maybe there's a pancake. So she goes down and scoops it up just in case. How about that recovery? Celebrate to him. <laughs> <laughs> Point Breeze, and we're going to have a timeout Columbia with a score 22 15. Breeze in command right now in game one. And there's Friedrich. She's such an animated coach. She's so positive. It's her first year, but it's not the first she's been with these kids. She's been with Edgerson and Sammy. Uh, Sammy since she was eighth theater, Edgerson since she was in six. Yeah, I mean, she really knows the kids a lot, and she's got those earrings in. Did you see them? So she considers those pretty lucky. But yeah, she has a real good rapport with them. I mean, she even stayed in the room with the kids. She said that McLeod talks in her sleep. <laughs> so I give her a lot of credit. All right, now the score is exactly what's on the chest of Brittany Shroggy, 21 to 15. A lot of free balls being generated by Columbia. I know they'd like to generate a lot more attack. And we're going to get a net violation it's being called by umpire Norantic, and that is 22-15. Shragi still serving. 23-15. Point. Every point matters when you're in the state final game. Oh, it's a nice pick, a great defense. Sammy back in the front row, and oh, you can tell. That was hit with authority. There's the face we've been telling you about. There's that emphatic, yes, we can do it right now. And she's so intense, I mean, she really could get a string of things going for this team. Barth on the free ball. Oh, nice play by Sammy. Picked up nicely. Andrus. Tipped. To Barth. And that ball both tipped and probably in. Patrick's at point. 
And we have a net violation apparently on Brees and on Bart, so that's gonna be Point Columbia. 18-23, they're down by five. 24, possible game point for the Cougars. Um, Bart did a nice job on that. She saw that her hitter was one-on-one. -on -one. She gave it to her for that cross court kill. Buddy has a chance to serve it. Oh, what a play! <laughs> Not this time, says Sammy, but I'll tell you what, number 19, Laura Buddy, what a sequence. Well, it, you know, your coaches always tell you, when you dig a ball, get ready in case it comes right back. And she obviously uh, thought it was coming and she was ready for it. with her leadership, taking control, making sure that the game is ended. Well, as you look at the Columbia fans, they're hoping to turn things around in the next game. We'll be back right after this. We're back at Redford Arena. Let's look at the final point of the first game. And there's Barth at the net being a deterrent. Sarah Bailey, the 5'4 junior, to serve for the Columbia Eagles. And that ball is down and good. Point. That's a tough shot on that right side when the lefty comes around like that and hits that ball on the line. We've been seeing that all night. That line shot is very tough. Jump serve of Sarah Barth. Sammy down. That's a nice start for her. Sammy's talking to her teammates. We could do this. A lot of positive comments you see amongst the kids. One of the things that uh, Coach Friedrich said is if you can spend a day with these kids, you just love them. They are so much fun. And what a nice thing for a coach to feel. In yeah. fact, her biggest concern was that it'd all be over tonight either way. Well, she even enjoyed the fact that they love these white uniforms and they're kind of not smelling too good, but she thinks it's all right <laughs> that they continue to wear them because they like them, so. Whatever works. And boy, the volleyball players are a very superstitious lot. We found that this weekend, haven't we? Oh, come on, you were that way too. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Gart side serving with a 3-1 lead. Picked up. Everywhere Sammy goes, there seems to be a white and purple cougar. Yeah, I mean, they really have a balanced attack. They have a lot of players to go to. And uh, both setters are doing a nice job of feeding the ball. Go out of bounds off of Lindsay, a rare receive error. And Gartside stringing together three successive points, and of course the side out point, so it's 5 1. An illegal hit by Sarah Bailey, 6 1, and timeout. For Columbia. Back at Redford Arena where you see Bree Central won the first game and is leading 6-1 in the second with guard side serving after the timeout by Columbia. Sammy, everything she hits, there's a cougar waiting for it. And credit them for the great defense. Another great move by Bar Garth. And that ball is good. Number 21, Shragi with the kill. Well, what's frustrating for Columbia right now is guard side serving is amazing. You can see the ball floating. It's hard to read. She's got some kind of float on it, like a knuckleball. And it, they're having a tough time with it. Well, Libero, Tracy Ford doing a nice job there. Into the middle. Oh, nice job by Sammy. And look at that expression, exhorting her teammates right now, she says. Well, we weren't lying when we said she's fired up. There's proof. Look at that. That is a great look at what Sammy does. And she's it's always positive. Great intensity. Shragi out. And with Brittany Schmidt serving, the 5'6 senior, climbing back 3'7. 
come the Eagles. for a while and all of a sudden she comes up and go, oh yeah, mm -hmm. in case you forgot about me. <laughs> she doesn't want us to do that. <laughs> Point, Breeze. Shragi again with that elevation, taking a look around and putting the ball where she needs to. I'll tell you what, she's 5'7", and who knows if that's the truth, she gets up. That ball is tipped. Point, Cougars. She's 5'7", and she plays like she's 6'1". Open up a 10-3 lead with Lindsey Holtman serving. She plays the back row for Bacchus. Outside to Lindsey. Oh, that was a little bit of a whoop. You got it, no, you take it. Point, Columbia. And Sammy McLeod will move to the back row and serve the 6'2 senior. A great program at St. Louis University will be benefiting McLeod's services when she's done here with high school. And energy. <laughs> Out. Point. Eagles. There's a good look at Jim Cook. He has a career record of 443 wins and 154 losses. 18 years of volleyball. Ball six times here at State, one in 1996, last year in 2003. Well, I remember Jim from that year because that was my first state championship and he won the same time. So there's a lot of tapes at home with him on it. When we talked to him earlier, he got a big grin out of that. He says, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> together. <laughs> He's a class act. <laughs> 11 5, Breeze with the lead. And there's Garth. Sammy tries to find an open area. Nice picked up by Andrus. And there's Shragi. Through the block picked up by Sammy. Good rally. Next play. Anderson can't believe that she felt the smoke hat just right there. Just couldn't get quite close. Well, she thought she had it, and that's frustrating when you're right there. Watch her right here. She's going up, and she's like, I think I got this one. Just off the fingertip. She thought she was going to take it down. There, she, that feels better. Yeah. I can do that, too. I, I can hit the opposite way. That's what she's letting them know, and she did a good job with that. And Natalie Harris will come in to serve for the Eagles. And successful. Well, they need to get a couple of those to get back in here, and they're not far off. They're only five points away as a coach. Like, just, you know, one at a time, take it one at a time. But serving tough is certainly in order here. And double hit. A rare error by Barth. Point Eagle. So that's a long, the most points they've able to string together in this game, and it's got to feel good. Only down by four. <laughs> Sammy showing her all around skills, playing defense. And Atchison. the free ball, guard side. It's a long point. Oh, and Atchison, that's two in a row. And she's good, doing a great job with that one blocker, finding to go to the left, go to the right, making it happen. She needs to continue to do that, and the serving has to continue to get tough here. And just a sophomore, I mean, that's a young 6'3 young lady. Oh, what a dig. And all of a sudden, the Eagles are finding some
the big time line. Five within two, and we're gonna have time up for the Cougars. It's the sixth appearance, as we mentioned before, at pre-central. They were state champs in 96, third in 92 and 98, and their last appearance in 2003. And of course, the first appearance for Columbia. Mother McCauley also over Juliet Catholic in three, 22-25, 27-25, and 25-21. Barth, out of the net. Well, so the timeout appears to be well called by Coach Jim Cook, because it's stepped to tie. Shragi back to serve. 13-10. Right off the hand of Barth. <laughs> she just went after again. that. Yeah, she went after that and said, uh, I think we need the serve back. So this is how you do it. Kelly Lindsay serving. Block put out of bounds. Number eight, Melanie Garkside with a hit point. Cougars. And Lauren Buddy serving. Also just a sophomore, played a great match. Especially in game one where she was playing a lot of defense. The ball was a little tight, and Etchison had to make a save on it. Unfortunately, she hit the net, but it was a really tough ball to get at. She just needs to come back and, and put another one down. It makes it 15, now 16, 11. All of a sudden, now Cougar playing up close. Here come the Cougars again, etching out, eking so, ever so slowly that lead. And it was a good timeout called by Coach Cook. I mean, he knew, hey, we just got to get back into doing what we're doing. Like he says, our game. Keep with our game. And and that's what they're getting back in the swing of Doesn't here. Doesn't worry about anybody else. No. And you can see why. Yeah. If you do what you do well, it sometimes doesn't matter. And the thing with this three central team is as they start rolling, they just keep accumulating points. I mean, they... They do a great job of just keep coming back and doing a point here, a point here. And the only team in the final four tonight playing without a Libra. Well, Lauren Buddy certainly having her way, serving with her team rallying around her, 18-11, and we're gonna get a timeout by Kelly Friedrich. We wanna talk things over. Here you see Jim Cook talking to his charges. He never gets excited. He's just so calm. Yeah, he just is, you know, I, I don't know. It seems like sometimes he's got to settle down a little bit. The kid's got so much energy, it probably exhausts you. Well, Coach Cook knows exactly what he's talking about. You know, they have also, let's face it, these kids have all had very, very strong feeder programs in their areas. Yeah, I mean, especially the Class A teams, they talk about all the time how how grateful they are that there's a lot of younger coaches that know what they're doing, getting these players well seasoned, and, and they're able to compete right away. And that's why you have these young players pulled up. They're able to compete in big matches like this because they're used to winning, used to getting that skill taught to them from good coaches all the way through. And speaking of those coaches, I think one of the things that's really nice is tonight they honored some of the teams of uh, the past that are returned. And so many of the coaches now have been players themselves in these tournaments. Makes a big difference. Yeah, and it just tells you what a great experience all these kids are having. They want to go back to their schools, and, um, you know, everything's so positive, and, and, and it's always nice. And what the IHSA has done for particularly girls' athletics in the last 20 years has been phenomenal. Picked up right where they left off after the timeout. 19-11, Breeze Central in command right here in the second match as you look at Mark. Ball handling error, 20. Lauren Buddy has strung together seven points here, so she has certainly given Coach Cook why she served number one. Atchison. Oh, smart play. Barth is just such a smart player. And you just love watching her. She's got a smile on her face. It, you know, here she goes, she hits the ball, she can feel it. And you know, you just love watching that. The kids on the bench are having a riot over there. And <laughs> the back is just like drooling. Yeah. Just a little, little 
She wanted that to go straight down. It was headed that way, just a little bit too far out. A little deep. So that brings up Sarah Bailey, serving for the Eagles. And here they come again. They're just a bunch of fighters, you know, and they're gonna fight until they can get back into this game, which I think is great. Good serve. Oh. Bacchus. Wow. Well, she wanted that one. Sarah Barth. Up 22-12, or 22-14, sorry. A little bit into session, but Sammy comes up with it. McLeod. Oh. Back is going to be called for an illegal hit. Point Columbia. And that will put back to serve number 13, Corey Gumbersheimer. Down 14-22, second game. Marie's won the first. And an open spot, number 19, Brittany Schmidt finds the hole. And here we're finding it again, the fight back in, and you know, as a player, when you're in the state finals, you're, you're not, you wanna go down fighting, you wanna leave everything on the floor, and they're doing that. Both these coaches have instilled that in the kids, and they played it for each other. Whoa, no doubt about that one. Whoa. Oh. Dart side, 23-15. They won the first 25-19. Two points away from a state championship. Can they close it out here? Now with Sammy at the net. No, McLeod says uh, not yet. Or maybe not at all. You never know. Brittany Schmidt, back to serve. Oh, back has taken the team on her shoulders. Uh, I think that's a trifecta. I think that's what we call a trifecta. Three kills in a row, I, I believe. Very powerful. Well, it may be the biggest trifecta she's ever had because they are at state championship point. Holtman serving. Nice dig, McEndis. Sammy says, no, we're still in this, baby. Point, Eagles. And she'll go back to serve. Sammy McLeod, number three. Oh, nice block, Lindsay. That was a great block by Kelly Lindsay. She read the play, went straight after, right on her, lined up right on her right shoulder, went straight down. Another good block. Tough play for Edison, and there it is! 25-18! The Cougars! have won their first state championship since 1996 for Coach Jim Cook. Both teams have done a great job, and the sportsmanship is always incredible here. Both, all the fans were great during the match, a lot of support, and that's an exciting group of young ladies right there. Well, they're co-school in the, in the town, Breeze Modern Day down here as well, so Breeze, the city, has an awful lot to celebrate this year. As you see the scores, 25-19, 25-18, Bree Central Cougars over Columbia Eagles in the Class A Championship. Anna Etchison.
Ashley Aris. Aaron Bingham. Shelby Stein. Jessica Rushline. Kelly Hunsdorfer. Melanie Herbeck. Manager, Ashley Siegel. Manager, Kelsey McGee. And statistician, Taylor Ardinger. And now, please meet the Cougars of Central High School in Breeze who finished the season in first place. Superintendent Kevin Meyer. Principal Kent Jones. Athletic Director Al Warnecki. Head Coach Jim Cook. Assistant Coach Kelly Potes. Players, Sarah Barth. Lauren Endres. Brittany Shragi. Side. Amanda Beckus. Lindsay Holtman. Brittany Holtman. Bethany Becker. Cassie Becker. Kelsey Shear. Cassie Beanie.
Megan Winkler. Statistician, Tara Bendhoff. Statistician, Amy Eisenprice. And trainer, John Attaway. And now, we'll coach Kelly Friedrich and the members of the team from Columbia High School. Please step forward to receive your second place trophy. And will Jim Cook and the members of his team from Central High School of Breeze step forward and receive your championship trophy. Attention Breeze Central fans, we've been handed this announcement. The volleyball team will be on tomorrow with a parade leaving the high school at noon. A reception will follow at the gymnasium beginning at one o'clock.
all played together and we've known each other pretty well. So coming up here our senior year was like one of our main goals. And just coming up here, it's awesome. I, there's no words to describe it. I just, it's so much fun. Well, you were fun to watch. You have a great smile. Thank you. We're going to talk to your head coach over here. Congratulations. Last time you were here in 1996, you won. And now you did it again. Does it feel any different? <laughs> now it's just a different set of kids, but they worked hard just like the 96 team. They worked very hard. and. We just came in to play and try to put our best, and uh, I think we had one of our best games. Tell me a little bit about your motto, get her done, and how did that come to be? I don't really know. That's their, that's their business, but uh, it's just one of those things, I think, that just we were having problems sometimes in the uh, first part of the year of finishing off games, and uh, we just kind of took that on as a motto that we had to get the whole thing finished, not just part of it. Well, they certainly got it done, and they're going to go celebrate and take this heavy trophy back to the school. And we'll be back right after these messages. The 2005 Class A champs are the Cougars of Bree Central and the Double A. It's the Red Hawks of Naperville Central. For Denise Cavanaugh, I'm Ann Penson saying so long from Redford Arena.